is, is also involves human rights, obviously, uh, but there are rights to freedom, to, to, to not be regulated, to not be controlled, to be left alone. These are important rights and they have to be part of the dialogue. Yeah, please. Hello, I wish to know that uh, how do you consider the role of national governments in this context? I mean, I understand that you wish to give a political momentum to this, but what I feel is that uh, national governments should be kept apart. I mean, a different set should be made for them. Uh, they do have role, I understand, but that should be a separate one. That's what I feel. So I wish to know how do you consider the role of governments in this context? I think the question is too big uh, to address here, but a very brief comment that uh, it's very difficult to set governments, national governments aside in any kind of uh, political reality yeah, which we, we may be faced with. Uh, but what we see is that in this today's world, it is possible that normative frameworks which are global seeps down to national governments relatively much more easily than they used to a couple of decades back, perhaps. So it is possible in a connected world to have normative frameworks which are global and then get uh, them to influence national governments. Uh, and, and I can't see how they can be put aside, but yes, the framework within which we should be working should not only be a sum of the national governments. There should be much more than that, and that, that we are very cognizant about. I don't know. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Sergio Suyama. I'm a federal prosecutor in Brazil. Uh, I'd like to know uh, what is the current level of the discussion regarding not uh, properly uh, the, the substantive uh, pr uh, principles, but uh, procedural principles regarding uh, the internet, especially regarding jurisdiction and sovereignty and the capacity to a state to legislate over uh, the internet. Uh, the model adopted until now uh, has been, uh, in my opinion, has been excessively based on the country, uh, on the country of a region uh, uh, approach, uh, which states that, that the place where the data are located defines uh, or uh, 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 jurisdiction and legislation, or even worse, uh, uh, the location of the company, the ICP, ISP company, defines jurisdiction and legislation over the internet. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm asking if this solution uh, is the best uh, in order to, pro to protect uh, not only the national interests of the government or, 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 or so on, but uh, the, uh, uh, if the solution is uh, the best in order to protect human rights, because uh, we are talking about human rights here and the principles of, uh, and, uh, I think, the, the main goal of uh, uh, everyone here is to def to defend to protect human rights and if you want to re really you want to to protect human rights uh, all over the world and on the internet I think uh, I think uh, I, I'm asking if the solution the country of a region approach uh, is the best one in order to protect human rights especially for developing countries because uh, our countries uh, are uh, uh, big consumers, more and more, are becoming uh, big consumers of internet uh, transnational services like uh, Google or Yahoo or Microsoft. And uh, I, I'm, I don't know if this uh, approach is the best one for uh, for us, for us uh, members or citizens of developing countries, because uh, this solution uh, implies uh, 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 obliges uh, all the consumers to. Uh, deal with a legislation and a jurisdiction that are not uh, our ju jurisdiction and legislation. And uh, I, 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 whatever, that's, that's what I'm asking for. That's Thank a you. very, again, it's another question about the role of the nation state. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Ian talk, but uh, this is something that gets into very uh, deep territory. And let me just give you my uh, historical perspective on this, which is that the, the nation state is the institutional form that uh, sort of enacted uh, individual human rights, uh, you know, starting in the 17th century, basically, and that, uh, to me, the internet is a signal that we are superseding that institutional form and that uh, the, that the scope, uh, what matters is the, the human right more than the institutional framework for generating those. Now, there are instances in which 
particularly with respect to democratic representation, uh, that local and national governments can do better than a global structure. And there are incidents in which, uh, particularly regarding freedom of expression, I think uh, local and national governments are frequently uh, obstacles more than protectors of, of these basic human rights. So my perspective is extremely transnational. I'm, I'm on the way, I don't know what you want to call it, the left end of the spectrum with that regard. And it's a perspective I think should be known is out there. But, uh, and it's a very difficult issue to navigate because we know that uh, assertions of national sovereignty can really get in the way uh, uh, of what we normally consider to be you know, human rights. I mean, Brazil is not uh, the, the, the country that we're concerned about, particularly here when we talk about sovereignty, uh, but you know what we are talking about, I, I presume, and uh, uh, that's something that is really a complicated issue, so I'll let yeah, you know. Just, before, um, uh, let just a minute, I have uh, one process issue. Uh, we are in the last 10 minutes, and we would be closing, so people who are commenting, uh, try to look at closers. Thank you. Yeah, um, and because this could not possibly be addressed in 10 minutes, I do want everybody to come to a workshop tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's entitled The Transboundary Internet, Jurisdiction, Control and Sovereignty. And we have people from a lot of different perspectives you know, looking at these issues there. And hopefully we'll be able to get that into a great deal of detail because it is thorny. And I should also say in this area of rights, you know, this is just my little wrap up. Um, there is a thread from WISIS going on of government saying public policy is our area. And we heard a little bit of that in the opening ceremony. There was only two references to rights. One was from the... Um, uh, I, well, there was only two references of substance, I saw it in the whole thing. One was Graciela's very eloquent, and I wish I had it down in writing, expose of a number of the rights issues that we should be looking at. I thought that was terrific. But then straight after that, Toure and the ITU basically saying governments have to take control of this, and this was really the governments are responsible for rights and public policy thread that sits here. Another thread that sits here is the one that's coming up with something like the Global Network Initiative, where industry is saying we really do have to come up with some principles that deal with these issues. And of course the third thread is the very big and very important civil society thread which goes through the privacy internationals and all, all the NGOs who are active in this area. Amnesty, for heaven's sake, there is an awful lot of very big NGOs who are very active in these areas. Nothing constructive is going to happen until all of these three threads are heard in whichever way that happens. All of these threads are important. We cannot be without the NGO voice here. You're not going to get very far without the industry voice and governments aren't going to let you get very far without their voice. The challenge is how do we get that all together and this is this thing called multi-stakeholder. Can we carry it into the rights area? I'd love to see us spend the time at the um, next meeting in Cairo. At least if we can't get that as a theme, let's at least get a day on that and let's start to really examine this. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. That was said much better than I could Anybody else? Yes, please. Hello, uh, Ceren Ünal from, uh, I'm, a, I'm an instructor at Bilkent University, Faculty of Law in Ankara, Turkey. I'm also an ISOC ambassador. As a lawyer, I also think that it's quite important that direct references being made in such policy instruments to the current texts, like the Convention, like the Universal Declaration or the ECHR, uh, because at least then these principles will be used as soft law uh, principles in order to uh, interpret <coughs> the current uh, principles we have, which are actually b binding principles, uh, which would be in, uh, used by the national judiciaries, hopefully by the Turkish courts, where, when deciding whether or not to block access. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, before I no 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 you you'll be given the floor, but again uh, we are. In the last five minutes, I will have to give opportunity to the people here to uh, close. Uh, no, I, I'll give you the opportunity. Uh, so uh, just to introduce the issue that since it's a dynamic coalition, it's just not a workshop on reflections on what we think. Uh, if we can talk about what we can do now, uh, how do we go ahead? But in very short, because we don't have time, uh, that's, what, uh, that's the kind of thing I would be looking at, Professor and then a colleague from CAST. Okay, you can go first, no problem. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. okay thank you. Uh, 
actually, uh, it's, it, for me, just like that, uh, it seems uh, there should be a trade-off between legal right and uh, principles or laws. And uh, for my point of view, okay, sorry. <laughs> From my point of view, I believe we can build or we can establish a norm or principle. This this okay. Right. This norm or principle. Political right guaranteed. Also, uh, there are maybe there, there are many some there are many challenges, and uh, uh, I also make want to make an announcement. Uh, we can continue our discussion or or can discussion in. 6 December in room 2 in room 2 uh, 11 o'clock in the morning okay thank you yeah, that's the workshop on uh, cyber security issues which cast uh, is organizing oh, a very short remark on sovereignty and national state it's an important problem but I think that we must look at it not making reference to the traditional categories. Look, for instance, at what is now happening on YouTube. There is a direct relationship between national states and the, the top level of Google. This is a completely new dimension. And you know, for instance, I quote, that some uh, Republicans and Democrats representative in the US has uh, introduced a bill, the so-called Global Online Freedom Act, which would require that internet companies disclose to a newly created office in the State Department all materials filtered in response to demands by foreign governments. You see what the same dimension of sovereignty is being completely changing. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, if nobody else uh, wants to take the floor, I'd ask the panelists to give their closing remarks. Before that, I would once allow uh, the Bill of Rights Coalition, who did come to this uh, meeting on our request uh, to explore the possibilities of working together, I'd uh, ask Max to make some closing comments before uh, we, we go uh, to the panelists. Uh, Max. Well, I can only restate what I've uh, said before, that I think that um, it's very complementary, and in fact, um, the work that you have been doing and the thinking um, fits directly, dovetails in directly into the work that we are doing um, at the Internet Bill of Rights. It is meant to um, bring the heterogeneous views on rights together and really work to for a um, uh, rights-based internet governance regime. So um, yes, please, um, uh, let's explore after the meeting how we concretely um, uh, collaborate. OK, I come back to the panelists now. Normally, I should go last uh, because I'm moderating. But I would make a comment or two on which I wish uh, Carlos and Milton are able to say something. So with your permission, can I speak first? Uh, so we are looking at the possibility of working with the Bill of Rights uh, Coalition, even bringing it together into a single space uh, if we all agree. And we are also looking at the possibilities of making impact on the agenda of IGF Egypt. Uh, whether to get uh, rights in the internet as an overarching theme or getting some sessions onto it. Uh, we still are talking about it should be rights and principles, internet rights and principles, or it should be, it should be something else. So we would also want to listen uh, uh, to the panelists about what they have to uh, say about these possibilities. Carlos and Milton. Uh, just a, a, a quick remark regarding the organization of this after this meeting. There is the Bill of Rights has a list, a mailing list, and uh, I think that you have a, a website as well. Yes. And uh, maybe we have to do the same and, and, and see forms of collaboration and conver conversions with the Bill of Rights work and uh, having a space for these people to, to continue to interact right. you know, in this very useful exchange here. All right. Uh, 
briefly, I guess, I think I would emphasize the need to take uh, concrete uh, implementation steps uh, coming out of this meeting. Either we merge with the Bill of Rights uh, Dynamic Coalition. I imagine that would require a lot of feedback from the other side. Maybe they don't want to merge, <laughs> even if we do. Uh, so that's one uh, concrete outcome. The other one would be, uh, I think it's very good to have as a goal some kind of shaping of the agenda of Cairo. I think this is uh, something that gives a focus to our efforts and legitimizes our uh, viewpoints and gets them into the mainstream. And uh, one thought I'm having is the, the various ways in which this effort could be manipulated or undermined. I always have to think that way, having been involved here. So. Uh, uh, so my, it might be even better to focus on one particular right, uh, be it freedom of expression perhaps being the, the most uh, fundamental in the sense that uh, it's not that we're necessarily advocating total freedom of expression, but at least get people to respond to how far that right goes, what it is, how it's interpreted in the internet context, uh, and so on, um, might make it less easy for people to say, Oh, we're talking about rights and principles, so how about the principle that uh, I get to uh, undermine your rights when it's necessary to secure the interests of the state or something like that. Uh, I can see all kinds of games being played with a broader agenda. I'm not suggesting that I'm totally wedded to the idea of a specific one, but I'm just thinking aloud really about the ways in which this could be pushed forward most effectively. Um, let me react to that directly. I'm, I'm happy to explore the possibility to look into freedom of expression. Um, I, I, we have been starting to explore with the Privacy Coalition very concrete steps to um, push for uh, privacy standards to be implemented when you sign up for um, services like Facebook or uh, Gmail or whatever to um, see how, that, how the data will be handled. So this could be a, um, a, a project that really goes exactly in the direction I agree. We need to move beyond the deliberations and thinking and get out and spread the word and show what we are all about. I think uh, as a politically uh, strategic, uh, a political strategy, we may not want to uh, focus on one right or the other right if we are looking at uh, some kind of a specific gain vis-a-vis -vis the next IGF. Uh, I think it's, it's a kind of a new way of looking at policy making which we are trying to give to policymakers. And if we just get fixated on one right or the other, you know, there's always a polarization which would exclude the rights uh, discussion altogether. Be an example of what we want to do. Uh, the example has a, has a baggage. Uh, be that's, careful of the sovereign rights of nation states. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So if, if we present rights as a way of looking at public policy making, rather than being ITU centric or ICANN centric or national government centric, uh, who makes the policies, uh, rather than going from them, who makes the policies, we say what are the basis of policies, what are the principles of the policies. I mean, nowadays UNDP takes a human-centric security, right to security you know, viewpoint, which is different from a state-centric uh, security viewpoint. So we are trying to talk about a different way of looking at internet governance policy making. And that's a broad agenda which I think we can start working on without, without going to the specific rights which, on which the polarization would be so strong that we would not be even be able to open the space up uh, for, for a possible, a real possibility to be this kind of thing to be put on a political agenda globally. Yeah, so that's all from us. Anything, Milton, uh, Paulus? No. Thank you very much. Yes. I have one thing. I recommend that you all see the movie called Untraceable. It's a very recent movie uh, on a way to do collective murder without uh, Suyama getting us or any other uh, prosecutor. <laughs> It's terrible, it's very complex, and it's fascinating, very interesting, and brings a lot of questions to what we are discussing. Okay? okay Untraceable. La last process discussion. Uh, <laughs> if you people want to contact with us and you find lost because we have not exchanged cards, on the IGF website, there is a dynamic coalition space, and there are contacts for the dynamic coalition, and you want to get in contact with us, please do. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming here today.